Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Um, in December the 27th, 1999, I, I and two other junior doctors embarked upon a, a ward round at Wexham Park Hospital in Slough. Uh, we had 72 patients to see that day. Um, it took us, I think, 13 hours to, to get round all of the patients. Um, I say that because that was, what, 14 years ago, and yet I'm hearing that this is apparently the only crisis to end all crises. Um, every year in the National Health Service, uh, doctors are worried and are concerned about the pressures that the winter is going to bring to bear. And I don't think this year is any different to 1999. Um, I want to try and be a bit challenging today and perhaps a bit counterintuitive in view of the, the motion on the floor of the House. Um, we have too many uh, casualty departments in this country. Um, if we start looking at the mortality statistics, your likelihood of survival, and I would say to the Honourable Member for Wigan, that if my grandfather was going into hospital, I'd want him to go into hospital where he had the best chance of survival, not, 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 one, not one that was necessarily just down the road. Yeah, yeah. Um, and unfortunately, and I don't know the Honourable Ladies' Hospital, of course, but a large number of hospitals in this country don't deliver the very best care. They don't deliver the best mortality statistics. And um, we need to reflect upon that without trying to score some petty political points about, um, about a variety of different issues, some of which I, I do, of course, I'll give way. And I just want to, uh, to, uh, to query a point that he raised about that th this isn't anything unusual in terms of a, 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 a crisis. The government's own Health and Social Care Information Centre published figures which show that in England, uh, and the number of visits to A&E department has risen by 11% in four years to 21.5 million attendances. That's 60,000 a day. So clearly the numbers are increasing. And our argument is that's partially as a consequence of government policies, yeah. cutting social services and so on. Yeah, in fact, in fact, Actually, it's 37% increase in emergency admissions over the last decade. 65% of hospital admissions are to people over 65. Dementia is doubling as we speak. The NHS budget, 25% of it is going to be spent on diabetes by 2025. To try and suggest that somehow a government of three years is, is, is in that three-year period, you've got the genesis of the challenge that we face. I'm sorry, um, it's simplistic. It's the, the most polite thing I can say to the Honourable Member is it's a simplistic argument. Um, we have a perfect storm, of course. To the Honourable Member, I don't disagree with him that we want a configuration of services that ensures that patients get the very best possible care and which saves patients' lives. But wouldn't he agree with me that if changes do have to be made, the transition planning and the resources to support the transition are an absolutely vital component of success? And I have to tell him, in relation to the reconfiguring and reconfiguration that we've just gone through in Trafford, I simply don't see those resources have been put in place. Lady, that the plans in place for a lot of these reconfigurations are somewhat made up on the hoof. They're usually created and pushed by a series of local issues, 19th, 20th century buildings that no yep. longer can deliver 21st century health care. And um, I recognise that there is a need for a plan. I will come to that towards the end of, of, of my contribution today. Um, I think I fear at the moment that there is a sort of perfect storm looming. Uh, if the honourable gentleman would allow me, I will come to what I think we need to do. Um, there is a perfect storm looming here. We have infrastructure that's not fit for purpose. We have too many hospitals that we can't staff properly. One of the contributing factors to mid-staffs was poor staffing levels. That's because they were trying to do it over two hospital sites for a population that isn't big enough to support one site. Um, we have an ageing society. We have an increasingly obese society. We have behavioural change in terms of people's attitudes towards pain and suffering, and indeed their attitudes towards seeking health care. I've not yet heard a contribution so far about the type of uh, presentations that are occurring in casualty departments, which are rarely accidents and extremely rarely to be emergencies. And we have to ask ourselves, how do we address that when, in fact, you know, I'm standing here with a dreadful cold, feeling pretty lousy. Um, 
I've seen hundreds of patients in my lifetime who have presented to me as a GP. I've seen patients present in A&E um, like I'm feeling. Um, I'm not going to either because I understand that I have a viral infection and it will get better by itself. The problem is, at the moment, is that people just do rock up at A&E because it is the only place they think they can get seen. No one actually is questioning whether they should actually just not bother turning up at all. I can't, of course. I, well, if you, if you could. I'm very grateful, friend. I'll be very, I, I'm following what my, right on, my honourable friend is saying very carefully. But would you agree that part of the problem with the A&E is the tremendous backup that occurs with people who are admitted and the inability to, get, to discharge people who yes. ought to be out of hospital? Yes, I, 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 I thank my right, right honourable friend uh, for that contribution. Yes, we do need to integrate, and this is where the shadow front bench are right in terms of their uh, calling for more integration. Of course, that's part of it. But just in closing, this perfect storm is coming together, and I suspect it's probably going to hit around about 2020, maybe this side or the other side, when we have such an ageing society with such expectations and a creaking infrastructure that's not able to deliver the, the best care that we know that can be delivered. Now, in order, now looking at the time, I shall be brief. Um, we do need to make this a cross-party uh, approach, a cross-party plan. Uh, I suspect we've got twice as many acute hospitals as we need. I suspect we probably only need about 100 in England and Wales. Population to serve each acute hospital should be around about five, six, seven 700,000 people, which is about 10 constituencies, nine uh, constituencies. So we can't all come in here defending our local DGH. I'm sorry, those days have passed. And if you think I'm a maverick, I'm being backed up by every single Royal College, the King's Fund, the NHS Confederation. I could go on. So we do need to deal with it. And I recognise the politics of this are very difficult, but I think we should convene a cross-party committee on this. I think there should be a cross-party understanding. We're going to have to do it at some point in the next five to ten years, and it would be remiss of us, it would be wrong of us as, a, as, a, as an institution to ignore that reality. And I'm, I'm, I'm tired of sitting in here and listening to people trying to score political points on this issue. Of course we can argue and debate about funding of healthcare. There's scope for debate in healthcare provision, philosophical differences, of course. But when it comes down to it, we need a hospital infrastructure that can deliver acute emergency and surgical care for the very best care to everybody at their time of need, and I fear we don't have that. In terms of the, the integration, yes, we do need to integrate social care with health care. There are some models. Cambridgeshire is embarking upon a very good plan, um, but it needs to happen up and down the country. Yes, we do need seven-day-a-week care, but in order to staff that appropriately, we need fewer hospitals. You will not be able to have seven-day-a-week consultant care on every DGH site in this country. In conclusion, and I, I, I wish it, I had a bit longer, I think we just need to raise the bar here. I really, we really do need to raise the bar here, because what we all want, I think, in this, in this country is the best care for all.